Welcome back, everyone, to another Linux video. Today, I'm really excited to talk about Scrivener for Linux. If you're not familiar with what that is, I'll explain it. I'll give it a little introduction. But this is a nice piece of free software, which is proprietary in the regular world uh, on Mac OS and Windows. But we have a free version on Linux that we can use, even though it's not exactly open source. We're going to get into it here. I'm going to show you a few things. So basically, Scrivener is a writing app. You can download an app image here. Um, some folks were nice enough to package the binary that uh, the company provided into this app image. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description below. But if you just Google Scrivener for Linux, you'll find this uh, linuxapps.com website. And uh, basically, all you do is you download this app image. And I will show you what that looks like here. In XFCE here, I can just click on this and it'll ask me if I want to integrate this app image into my system. This will add it to my applications menu and install the icons. Um, and if I don't do this, I can still just launch it from the app image. I've already done this, so I just clicked yes. And, you know, that put the the actual application into XFCE so I can click it from the app menu in places like that. I'm sure your Linux distribution or your desktop environment offers you a similar option. I've already done this, so I'm going to decline that for now. And as you can see, this drops me into the new project window here. So there are some, um, oh, these are some, some pre-configured templates that I created. Um, so you've got ones for fiction, nonfiction, script writing. You can actually do various types of screenplays and stage plays and uh, comic scripts here. Uh, and then there's also a miscellaneous. So you can um, save templates to these different sections here if you'd like. I've already got a document open, so I'm going to cancel this for now. This is it. This is uh, Scrivener here. I've slightly modified my interface here with a few other buttons and uh, this font that I like. So um, as you can see here, this is what I was writing about it. Scrivener is an integrated development environment for writing. It takes a one-to-many approach, meaning that you can write in the Scrivener interface but are not locked in. You can compile your manuscript into other deliverable formats like plain text, HTML, Microsoft Word, rich text format, LaTeX, and more. The compiler, which you see here, um, if I expand this out, uh, it's actually pretty highly configurable, um, allowing for text substitutions, print formatting, and macro expansions. What I mean here by this one-to-many approach is, um, as you can see, no matter what font you like to write in or um, what kind of uh, setup you have in the interface, you can compile this to whatever format you want. So, uh, for example, if you're submitting a Microsoft Word document to a, a publisher or an editor, if you have like a fiction manuscript, they might want Times New Roman font or Courier or something like that. You can compile to that without having to write in that font. So basically, this separates your composition phase from your formatting phase, which is what you want, because when you are uh, writing, you want to focus more on structure uh, often than the actual formatting. So uh, here's my little story here. I started using Scrivener on my old MacBook. I really liked how the IDE helps you focus on the structure of the manuscript. Uh, as you can see here, there's this uh, outlining section in the binder here. So using the binder, you can create and organize multiple text files, either as standalone texts or text nested in a folder. This freeform approach offers a lot of flexibility. If you're writing fiction, these text files can be discrete scenes or chapters in the manuscript. Um, you can also nest the text files hierarchically. You don't have to use the folders if you don't want to, but you have the option there. It gives you a lot of uh, flexibility to work however you like. And so here's a little bit of the story of uh, how this came to be. So for years, I was wondering if Scrivener was going to release a Linux version. So I had completely migrated over from the Mac world to the Linux world by that point and, um, you know, deciding not to go back because I could pretty much do everything I needed in Linux. Um, there was no Scrivener option. So, of course, I used uh, Emacs, which um, has a lot of similar features in org mode. While, of course, I generally prefer free open source software over the proprietary, um, it would have been nice to have Scrivener as an option. 
from what I read, they were developing a Linux version, but they decided to um, abandon the project. It is a much older version of Scrivener. It's like version 1.9, I think. It is fully functional, and uh, as a, a gesture of goodwill to the Linux community, they went ahead and released it. They released the binaries, and um, other people packaged it up into an app image so that you can download it and just run it. Um, as easily as we just did, as you just saw. I'm going to do more videos about how to actually configure and uh, use Scrivener in a variety of ways. You can see here, uh, uh, kind of like org mode, if I, if I hold down my control key, you see how I can move parts of this document around. You can reorganize things. You can demote and promote uh, different parts of it. Like I said, this is uh, hierarchical, so you can have sections here. I can create a new folder. And of course, there's hotkeys for all this stuff, so you can um, want to be fast and use your hotkeys. Um, so you can see here now I've just nested these documents under a folder. So this is the untitled folder, but I can title it whatever I want. So I can't spell it correctly. And of course, um, uh, you can set project targets. I like this. So if you have a certain word count goal, like if I want this to be 10,000 words, I can set it here. And then you can also have a session target where you can hit... Uh, let's say each time you open the app or whatever, this resets, but let's say you want to do a thousand words in one session, uh, you can have that here as well. And it's got your spell checker and all the other things that you would need in an app like this. Uh, one other thing I like is it has typewriter scrolling. So if I turn on the typewriter, uh, you can't see it now because this document is not long enough. But if we made this longer, you can see that if I'm in the middle point here, it will uh, keep me in the middle of the page. Um, so even as I keep writing, um, it will always keep me in the middle here. So I, I won't be writing way down at the bottom here. It, it will automatically scroll me up. And there are some ways of doing that in other text editors. Uh, in here, it's just part of the interface. You can just click it and turn it on. It also has a full screen mode. So if you want to type in like more of a distraction free environment, you can just turn that on and off. Uh, that's mapped to the F11 key. And um, so, yeah, and you can also change these colors around and uh, make this uh, any way you like. This is your like distraction free full screen mode. So, yeah, it is a, a very fully functional, very nice app. Um, and it has all of the features that I was enjoying when I was on the Mac version of Scrivener. Uh, all the basic stuff is there. So even though this is an older version, you're really not missing out on a lot. So if you want to try it out, like I said, I would be making some more videos here uh, coming up soon about how to use it. But there it is. Scrivener for Linux is finally here. I'm only about uh, like three years late in getting this news, but I found it now. And uh, now you have found it. Uh, let me know if you try it out. All right. I'm going to leave the video there. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll see you all next time.